use headphones for best experience. Today I would like to take a look at this page in my historic atlas, Germanic migrations and uh, conquests, the years 152-1066 from this book, Historical Atlas, by William R. Shepard, from 1924. I've used it in several other videos as well. But lately I have found this, this period the migration um, period, super interesting, because it's like uh, the transition from Roman Empire times, classic times, and uh, medieval times, and the start of the modern times. Somehow, that's how I see it. And um, there aren't many sources from this time, so we don't know so much. But there were a lot of people moving, tribes. As you can see on this map, all the colors and all the arrows showing where people moved. It's very small text here, and I'll zoom in a bit. So we have a color here for the East Cops, and then for the West. We have this blue color for the Huns. We have a dotted pattern for the Swedes. We have some dull purple or gray color for the Burgundians. We have this beige color, and for the Franks we have some, I would say, green color, and for the Arabs we have a striped pattern, for the Magyars for the Hungarians we have this pink color and we have some roots here, root of the gods solid red line root of the west gods the dotted red line Root of the Vandals, blue line. The root of Attila, dotted black line. More tribe 
Nice here. Allen's light blue. Angus, Saxons, and Jute. Some dotted pattern in a very light color. The Lombards have this yellow color. Northmen, Danes, and Normans have this light orange color. Trade route between Constantinople and Scandinavia. It's a dotted thin black line. Now I have to read this through. <laughs> We can start here, Great Britain and Ireland, and see what it says on this map. Or maybe even here we can start, in the very upper corner here. Because here we have some information about migration that is not shown on the map because it's too far to the west. Northwest. So it says Vinland around here, 1000. Greenland in 982, I think it says. And Iceland, the year 867. And Vinland is part of America. So these were the Northmen who migrated. Some Northmen migrated to these places. I know the colony in Vinland was not there for a very long time. Mm. But anyway, it's mentioned here. Greenland was longer, I think, but something happened. It's a mystery, mystery what happened to the Greenland colony. And Iceland has been inhabited since this point when the Norsemen came here. There were some Irish monks there actually before. And in Vinland and Greenland, of course, there were Inuit people. So, in uh, Northern Ireland, Ireland and Western Scotland, Western England, we have the 
Jesus gods here on this map. In eastern Scotland we have the Picts. Center of England and the east and southeast. We have the Angles and Saxons. So they came from from this area originally. Here you can also see Angles. of southern Denmark this part of Denmark, Jylland the southern part of this peninsula and the northern part very northern part of Germ today's Germany that area was inhabited by the Engels tribe the king of the Angles tribe is actually mentioned in in the Beowulf um, poem, old English poem from that could have been written as early as in seven hundreds, eighth, eighth century, and uh, the events in the poem takes place in the sixth century. It's basically around this time. Then they have it takes place here and here in Geet land, Jutland, today Sweden, and in Denmark. The king of the Danes is mentioned a lot and they the story starts here in Denmark. go fighting here towards the Frisians and I'm not sure exactly when in the story but I know that the king of the Angles is mentioned on this map you don't see so much of Sweden at least you see the capital, Uppsala. Not the capital today, because then it's Stockholm, but uh, around this time, the migration period, uh, Uppsala was the center of the Swedes. And I find it uh, fascinating that uh, when I uh, realized that um, the capital was actually a lot in the center of the kingdom by then. Now it's a bit odd, no, no not odd, but uh, maybe you would expect a capital to be located in the center of the country, maybe. Uh, if you do, then that's not the case in Sweden. Uh, today it's like located in the very eastern part the same with Denmark Copenhagen is located here at the very eastern part of the country but I just realized after looking at some old maps that um, unlike today when the countries are more uh, like uh, centered around um, terrestrial borders that's what defines the country somehow but at this point 
during the migration period and also later, I guess, mm. Viking Age and medieval, early medieval age. It was uh, centered, I mean, it, it, the sea was so important, you traveled by sea. So a, count, a country, a kingdom could be like, have this shape, because it was, no, this wasn't a kingdom looking like that, but it's just an example. So it was like, along the coast, on both sides of the sea, for example. Both coasts could be connected very, very strongly because there was so much uh, uh, traveling over the sea. And then Sweden was actually not, Sweden did not consist of this part. This, this, uh, today's southern part of Sweden, this part, were Danish by then. So Sweden was more here to the east. And also Finland was part of Sweden. So then you can see Sweden was more located or defined by the Baltic Sea. So around the Baltic Sea, with the Uppsala in the quite much in the center of everything, and uh, you could say the same with the Danes. So Denmark's king kingdom, Denmark was more like this. And even some parts of history, I know that uh, Denmark did some crusades to the south and southeast here, along this coast. So then you can see that Copenhagen was more... Now I haven't checked if Copenhagen really was the capital by then, but... Um, it was more country looking like this. So here we have the Goths in southern Sweden. So they have, um, the Goths were a separate tribe, separated from the Swedes. Here it doesn't say Swedes, it says just yes, Northmen for Danes, Norwegians and Swedes the Vikings, or this is actually, this map shows 150 to 1066, and the Viking Age is the, the last part of this period, so around 800 to 1066 is the Viking Age. But uh, in the 6th century, when the Beowulf poem takes place, then the Goths had their own kingdom and their own king. Beowulf actually became king of the Goths. And... Um, yeah. Wasn't it uh, England I was supposed to talk about? Here it says, Danes, and it's a small number here, 780 to 1035, I would say, it's very tiny, so the Danes, the Dane law had quite long history here. And then we have the Normans, 
in the southeastern England. The Normans who came from this place, Normandy in western France. And also have a history from Scandinavia. That's why it's called Normans. It means Northmen, basically. So the Northmen, even earlier than this map, came here and then they assimilated with the people here, I guess. And then a couple of hundred years later, they conquered England from the Angles and Saxons. And this was in, at the end of this period, I think it was in 1066. And then we have the Franks. In today's western France, they inhabited also the area of today's what's now Germany, Netherlands, Belgium, I guess. I find this area super interesting. I have read quite a lot about it. The, there's a tribe not mentioned here, what I can see. The Wends. A West Slavic tribe. Slavic tribe were based here quite a lot, but they had like a the westernmost uh, inhabited area for the Slavic, West Slavic peoples were here, uh, close to the river Elbe, and they were referred to as the Wends. And Scandinavia has a lot of history in this area too. So this was before this area was uh, Germanized. Can you say that before there were like Germanic tribes taking over this area. So then it was Slavic tribes. Um, called the Wends. And we, why I started to look up this was because I read that um, the Swedish monarch used to call himself or herself the as a title, the King of the Swedes, the Geats, and the Wends. And of course, or I, I knew what the Swedes and the Geats were, but not the Wends. And they used to use this title until 1973, actually. So it's just the latest monarch who got rid of it and not called it the Wends. Not mentioning the Wends anymore. But this was a title that uh, the Swedish monarch took uh, in the in the fifteen hundreds. Um, the Danish monarch used to have a similar title in the old since the. Uh, 12th century. Yeah, the Danish king uh, called himself the Wenders and the Wenders and the Gotesh Kunge, king over the Wends and the Goats. And then Sweden's king, the king of Sweden in 1524, Gustav Vasa really wanted to state that Swedish, Sweden did not belong to Denmark anymore because we had a long history of Danish rulers in Sweden. But he wanted to make Sweden 
um, very independent from Denmark. So then he came up with this idea to say that the Swedish king was the king of Swedes, Geats and Wends. Maybe it was something like that. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm get, maybe I'm mixing, mixing things up now. Or it could maybe have been during the 7th... I'm not totally sure when, exactly when they started to use the, the this title about the winds, but um, Sweden did have some possessions here, this part of the area, in like uh, 17th century, I think. And also Denmark had history of Crusades and possessions here in the area traditionally inhabited by winds. But here it says Rogians. Then we have the Vandals, a tribe that seems to have moved a lot. Here we can see, labeled here, the area close to the Oder River, in today's Poland. Then they seem to have moved here. a result of all of these migrations. So yeah, the Vandals. Yeah, there are some, some years also. Here you can see. Because it's a 411. They reached the southern parts of today's Spain. The 400s. And then you can see they were traveling here along the North African coast to Carthage. And then by sea from Carthage to Rome. I'll read just a few sentences from Wikipedia. The Vandals were a Germanic people who first inhabited what is now southern Poland. They established Vandal kingdoms. On the Iberian Peninsula, Mediterranean inlands and North Africa in the 5th century. On the order of the Romans, because this was before the Roman Empire fell, but on the orders of the Romans, the Visigoths invaded Iberia in 418. They almost wiped out the Alans and Silingi Vandals, who voluntarily subjected themselves to the rule of Hastingian leader. Gunderic. Yeah, this is very interesting. But I will not go 
too much in de depth about this because I haven't read so much about it yet. I have read a theory about the the Vandals tribe that they could have originated from a place north of Uppsala called Vendel. Vendel is a very important historic uh, site. Just like old Uppsala, there are like mounds there and there are there, there was a legendary king called uh, Uttar Vendel Kroka, for example. Vendel has uh, been a place with a lot of importance. But uh, yeah, I guess uh, very long back in history, so maybe even before the migration period. So that was a theory that the Vandals originates from Vendel. Or there's also a place in northern Jylland, in Denmark, that also sounds a bit like Vendel. I'm not sure exactly the name now. So the, the theory was that they could be from here or it could be from here. But they're first uh, recorded here, this area. But I mean, during this time people were moving like crazy. Because climate changes and things like that, I guess. I think it was used to be much warmer in Scandinavia, so a lot of people... So, and then there were this uh, climate change and became very cold all of a sudden, and people had to move to the south. And then there were people there already, and they had to move, and uh, that started somehow this all these movements and eventually the fall of the Roman Empire and everything. The Goths. According to this map, the Goths are the same as the Geats, but I'm not sure. That's not... Uh, everyone doesn't agree on that, I guess. There's also a bit of a confusion about the Geats and the Goots. The Goots are probably what's mentioned here. And the Goots could originate from from the island here, perhaps, Gotland. Or it could be the same tribe as those who inhabited Gotland. I wonder if Geats and Goots somehow were related because the names are so similar and you mix it up because they're spelled the Geats and the Goots are spelled differently in all languages and all the sources from this time and it's so confusing to see if, if they mean the Goots or the Geats or so the Goots or the Goths should have traveled from here, Poland, <laughs> and it says something. Goths about 150 AD. And then they were split into the East Goths, who stayed here, and the West Goths. Who went to the west? Here we have more east goes, Goths, here we have west Goths. East Goths. Into today's Italy, close to Rome here. The West Goths ended up here, the Iberian Peninsula. I will 
just read something about the fall of the Western Roman Empire from Wikipedia. In 376, unmanageable numbers of Goths and other non-Roman people fleeing from the Huns entered the empire. In um, 395, after winning two destructive civil wars, Theodosius I died, leaving a collapsing field army, and the empire still plagued by Goths, divided between the warring ministers of his two in incapable sons. By 476, the position of Western Roman Emperor wielded negligible, negligible, negligible military, political or financial power, and had no effective control over the scattered Western domain that could still be described as Roman. Barba barbarian kingdoms had established their own power in much of the area of the Western Empire. In 476, the Germanic barbarian king Odoacer deposed uh, the last emperor of the Western Roman Empire in Italy, Romulus Augustulus, and the Senate sent the imperial insignia to the Eastern Roman Empire, Emperor Flavius Zeno. Yep, so in the 4th and 5th century all this migration of the, all these uh, tribes, Germanic tribes, led to the fall of the Roman Empire. I want to see and focus a bit on the Lombardians. The Lombards, I mean. Here it says Lombards. Also close to the Oder River. Along the Oder River, the Carpathian Mountains. Then we find them here. In uh, what's today like? Could it be Slovenia? Hungary, Austria. This is after the fall of the Roman Empire, so it's in 566. Here also you can see the Lombards by the river Elbe. And then you see them here. Very close to Rome the 500s and there's a province today in Italy called Lombardia so I just was curious to know about the history of the Lombards the Lombards were a Germanic people who ruled most of the Italian peninsula from 568 to 774 with origins near the Elbe in northern Germany and Scania in southern Sweden before the migration period. Okay, so it says they originate from this area and also this area. That was Danish by this time, at this point. It's so strange, it's like all the, there are theories, according to different theories, all the people seems to originate from 
Scandinavia somehow. I don't know why, why it always like that. But there are just theories. And uh, Lomb Lombardy today is this part of Italy. Burgundians would be nice to read something about. Here we have the Burgundians in four hundred eighteen, and they look seem to have moved here in four hundred forty five. So this is Burgundy in today's uh, Eastern France. Let's see what it says on Wikipedia. The Burgundians were an early Germanic tribe or group of tribes. They appeared in the Middle Rhine region. Near the Roman Empire and were later moved into the Empire in the Western Alps and Eastern Gaul. Possibly mentioned much earlier in the time of the Roman Empire as living in part of the region of Germania that is now part of Poland. The Burgundians were first mentioned together with the Alemanni as early as the 11th Panegyric, Panegyric to Emperor Maxim, Maximian. Referring to events that must have happened between 248 and 291. And they appeared to remain uh, neighbors for centuries. The Alemanni and Burgundians. Yeah. Here you can see Ale Alemanni. And uh, that's still the, the name for Germany in French. Alemán. Maybe I could try to follow this trade route between Constantinople and Scandinavia. So here we have Constantinople. Yeah, it's here along the Dnieper River. And then over land here to Tina River, the Valko River, the Kladoga, and the Gulf of Finland here. And this must be the root of Attila. So Attila, frequently known, called Attila the Hun, was the ruler of the Huns from 434 until his death in March 453. He was also the leader of a tribal empire consisting of Huns, Ostrogoths, 
Alans and Bulgars, among others, in Central and uh, Eastern Europe. He is also considered as one of the most powerful rulers in the world. During his reign, he was uh, one of the most feared enemies of the Western and Eastern Roman empires. He crossed the Danube twice and plundered the Balkans, but was unable to take Constantinople. His unsuccessful, unsuccessful campaign in Persia was followed in 441 by an invasion of the Eastern, Eastern Roman Byzantine Empire, the success of which emboldened Attila to inv invade the West. He also attempted to conquer Roman Gaul, modern France, crossing the Rhine in 451 and marching as far as Aurelianum, Orly Orléans, before he, before being stopped in the Battle of the Catalonian. See if we can follow this line here. Four hundred forty six. It was here. Four hundred forty two crossing the Danube. came from the east four hundred fifty the Franks territory Four hundred fifty one, he was here. Yeah, it's interesting. Sweeps, I have no idea what the sweeps are, what the tribe sweeps. Ah, oh, it's a Swabi. The Swabi or Swabians were a large group of Germanic peoples originally from Elbe River region in what is now Germany and the Czech Republic. In the early Roman era, they included many peoples with their own names, such as the Marcomanni, Quadi. Hermondori, Sem Semnonis, and the Lombards. Uh -huh. So they were related to the Lombards. New groupings formed later, such as the Alamanni and Bavarians, and the kingdoms, and two kingdoms in the migration period were simply referred to as Swabian. Yeah, of course, that was the, the trade route we followed here. The Vikings that went eastwards all the way to Constantinople. Magyars seem to have moved from, came from the east here. Eight hundred thirty-five, and then later. 
during the 800s. They seem to have reached the area that is hungry today. does it say here? Varangians. I have to read about the Varangians. The Varangians, Old East Slavic was a name given by the Eastern Romans to Vikings, mostly Swedes. Ah, between the 9th and 11th century, Varangians ruled the medieval state of Kievan Rus. Settled among many territories of modern Belarus, Russia and Ukraine, and formed the Byzantine Varangian Guard, which later also included Anglo-Saxons. According to the 12th century Kievan primary chronicle, a group of Varangians known as the Rus settled in Nov Novgorod in 862 under the leadership of Rurik. Before Rurik, the Rus might have ruled an earlier hypothetical poly polity named Rus Kanganate. That's super interesting. They settled here, the, the Vikings, somehow. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sleep well. Take care. And see you soon.